ooh and ah and what have you. I mean, these guys run 190 miles an hour, and all of a sudden, boom, they stop in front of you. You know what it's like when they stop in front of you at 20 miles an hour. Here it is again. Now watch Wilson. We got the corner, got a little bit loose. Had to get off the gas, and Jeff Gordon, if he didn't hit him, I think that's my finger between those two cars. That's yeah. a second near miss for Jeff today. He was uh, almost involved in that first lap crash we had with Jimmy Hensley. Next time by, they'll get the halfway mark. Cross flags indicating that half the race has been completed. There's the leader, Dale Earnhardt. Ken Schrader. This is the 12th of 15 races that he has led this year. He's 10th in super speedway points. And he is the leader at the halfway point, Dale Earnhardt. leaving the point standings at that time. They don't do that anymore. Here's Terry Labonte, Ernie Irvin, and Darrell Walters. We go pit side again, and Jerry Punch. Well, you got Kellogg's, Kodak, and Western Auto, all three sharing the lanes. They also have, all three have something else in common. All three of them have Runt Pittman engines in. That is Ernie Irvin's engine builder, who sold three other engines for this race, and they include Jeff Purvis. But all three of those cars, Terry Labonte, Ernie Irvin and Darrell Walter have Sheldon Runt Pippen Motors, awfully strong motors and awfully even engines here at Daytona. Yes, indeed. Ted Musgrave, however, looks to the inside of Walter and passes him right at the start finish line. So Ted Musgrave moves up a position. So we are just past the halfway mark of the Pepsi 400. It's been mostly Dale Earnhardt in the first half. Back with more live action after this. I talked to him. Good point there, Neil. Okay. All right. Whoever's whoever whoever's on the toes up there, thank you. Boy, Rusty is. Hernard's uh, losing the handle down in the pit, guys, a little bit. Really running high. Might be saving his tires, but it looks like he's getting a little bit loose. Push or something. Out of boy, Ricky. ESPN Speed World coverage the Pepsi 400 being brought to you by Napa because there are no unimportant parts. By Pontiac and your nearby Pontiac dealers. We are driving excitement. And by Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. Here at Daytona, 84 laps are completed in the Pepsi 400. It is Dale Earnhardt leading Ricky Rudd. Is he losing the handle a little bit on this car, Jerry? I think so. Just from being here in the pits and watching Richard Childress, the car owner, stopwatch a couple laps ago, Earnhardt was running laps at 47.50 seconds, 47 and a half seconds. Last time by, it was 48.75, so over a second and two tenths slower. The car obviously beginning to get a little bit loose, but the, but the good news for Earnhardt is he's still out front. 
But now we're beginning to see a Ford challenge. It has been pretty much Chevrolets all afternoon, but now the first two are Chevys. And They've just been sort of grinding away, Bob. And, and Shepard has made the biggest move since the last pit stop. As we mentioned earlier, he came out and gets in about 20th position after making a major chassis change adjustment on the car, but it seems to be working for him. He's back up on the high groove again. Here he comes. Off to turn two with a pretty good run. But couldn't make a pass then, but he's strong. Sterling Marlin. He was definitely one of our sleepers, but he was asleep yet, so we couldn't find him for the shot. <laughs> Five cars behind the leader have never won here at Daytona. Ooh, Morgan's going by on the outside. Oh, Ooh, they get together. Oh, wow. man. You think Sterling didn't think back about the Daytona 500? No kidding. Woo. Wondering where Kyle Petty was. Oh, no, that was uh, Miller. Sterling's back in, in the 500, got off the ground, and the whole car closed. Yeah, came flying through the air right here in the tri -over. Came back down four tires. He finished about eighth in yeah. the Yeah, finished in eighth position. Here's the Western Auto Race summary. Earnhardt led 65 of the first 85 laps. 23 cars on the lead lap. Nine leaders, 17 lead changes. Three cautions for 11 laps. The average speed, 152.33 miles an hour. Those that have led a lap and picked up five bonus points. Earnhardt, Cope, Irvin, Jarrett, Gordon, Schrader, Kyle Petty, Dave Marcus, and Ricky Rudd. Out of the race, most of them because of accidents, although Dallenbach and Means and Bodine all experience some mechanical problems. But there's a couple of other drivers, Bob, that you saw pretty far down in the in the rundown. Bill Elliott had a, an unscheduled pit stop for uh, apparently got into the wall a little bit and they thought the tire was rubbing, and he went a lap down there pretty early. Kyle Petty has gone a couple of laps down. They simply, the handle just went away on the Melly Yellow Pontiac. And, and he was in that first crash over that big crash off turn two. Yep. Davey Allison's car just quit. He's riding home on the racetrack, and the car just quit. He coasted in, spent a couple of laps. Oh, he's back on the track. Let's go. Dale Earnhardt continuing to add to his total. He is the leader among active drivers in laps led at Daytona, 861 in 31 career starts. Here is Waltrip, Labonte, and Musgrave still running very close together. All of a sudden, Labonte must, uh, his chassis must be working pretty well because uh, Waltrip and Musgrave was quite a distance ahead of him, and I see he's sandwiched between them now, so. Kenny Wallace goes another lap down as Earnhardt and Schrader pass by on the high side of the road. And there's track. Derek Cope getting the lap. Remember, he's the guy who hit the tire on pit road, yep. made that late pit stop on the car play. He suffered for it, now he's a lap down. There's Didn't have the, the benefit of drafting the other cars when he got back out on the track. Yep. The Ray Bestis car up on top, also lapping Derek Cope. And of course, driven by Sterling Marlin. And Loy Allen goes another lap down at number 37. Jerry Punch has some information on Marlin's run. I don't know if you believe in momentum or not in racing. I believe it happens in a lot of sports, and I've got to believe it happens here. Remember Pocono, Sterling Marlin, B Billy, and Mickey Stavola told me, we're coming, we're going to come today. Yes, you guys are starting back in 32nd spot. They came on and finished a strong eight. Went to Michigan, started back in 12th spot, had a good run all day, finished eight. They started 22nd today, and before the race, they came and told me the same thing. Hey, guys, we're going to come, and we're going to come in a hurry. I got to believe these guys from now on. They, uh, they're pretty true to their work. Yeah, they sure are. They're up in third position now, just past the halfway point. I just saw Richard Petty going down, heading for pit road. Sterling Marlin started 22nd. Third, where he is currently running, has been his highest. He's been as low as his starting position of 22nd. Here's Schrader right on the back of Earnhardt. And Marlon, we see the red dots on the front of Marlon's car. That's tape on the front of that car. So oh, I thought they were fog lights, Benny. <laughs> he had some fog this morning. He's going to need it if, if they tried to run the race. But look how the groove has moved to the top of the racetrack now. Yeah. As the as fellows start fighting this loose condition, they're all on top of the racetrack now. It is not as sunny as it was when the race began.